Here at the schoolhouse, what we teach you is the science of recruiting. And what I mean by that is uh, how, how to use PAs, how to do kits and some of that different stuff, you know, the, the, the requirements to join as an officer uh, for officer recruiters, and those are the types of things we do. We do some sales training, uh, that, that gets into, you know, some of the fundamentals. Uh, what I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to explain to you, is the art of recruiting. Uh, this is tried and true practices that generate success. Uh, only one ex experienced recruiter that I can see. Anybody else been on a bag and recruited for a while? What did you guys recruit? Well, officer recruiting. Officer recruiting? Okay. And you? Same, sir. All right. Sir. All right. So, how about, have you ever worked a referral? What's the benefit of a referral? Normally, the blueprint's done for you. Right. You don't have to worry about them falling off, or they're already sold also. Hey, big, big thing on a referral. A lot of us receive referrals. My cousin, my, those are fine. You want the referral from a professor saying, this individual has the skill sets that you're looking for and inclination to be in the world. And that is the gem. Someone who's already blueprinted with the skill sets and a desire to join. That's what you're looking for. And being able to accomplish that will determine your quality of life. Bottom line. So, overview. We had a little bit of discussion about this this morning. What's the status of the market? You walk into, who's, who's a medical recruiter? Raise your hand. You walk into Sharp Hospital in San Diego, California. And you're not being wheeled in on a gurney, right? What's the reception to you? We're trying to take their people. You're what? What, what, what's the first reception? Oh, hi, thank you for your service. Can I help you? I'm a recruiter. What's the response to that? <laughs> what, when, people, when you hear the word recruiter, what comes to mind? Car salesman. Car salesman. What else? Liars. Liars, <laughs> right? No joke, back in the early 90s, uh, recruiter had a uh, license plate that said mentiroso. What does that mean? Liar. It's liar in Spanish, right? <laughs> so, how many of you have ever tried to buy a car? So you walk out there, your shorts and your t-shirt on a Friday afternoon and walk onto the car lot and this, this gentleman walks up to you with a sharp dressed shirt and a khaki slacks and says, can I help you? What do you say? No. I'm, just looking. I'm just looking. That's the, that's the biggest lie in the world, right? Excuse me. Nobody goes out to a car lot to just look, right? Maybe your high school kids do, but you don't put yourself through that unless you're interested, right? But why don't you talk to them? You don't trust them. Boom. You don't have their trust. I mean, they don't have your trust, excuse me. You have nothing but, you have a perception that they are interested in their best interest, not yours. They want you to drive off a lot in something, it's something that pays them what, right? So that is the perception when you walk into an educational institution, a hospital, any of those types of places, right? So your job is to get them to trust you. And how do you do that? By them getting to know you as a person, right? And even more so, you getting to know them. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? They want to know that you care and that you have a genuine interest in not just them, but their people. So here's the recruiter mindset. Uh, any of you guys recruit gen-off programs? So you guys can identify with this. We have been living in a world of what we call walk-in world, all right? Where people walk in and say, I need a job. I think the Navy might be good for me, right? What you do is you're scrambling around trying to filter who's good, who's bad, what's the right thing. And you're trying to figure out what's the next board. Okay, I got a pilot board. How many aviation kits am I working? What do I have to do? And I will tell you when you can write something down. This this PowerPoint is made available to you. When you get back to your office, it's on the it's on the N31 SharePoint. It hasn't changed. So you're trying to figure out when's the next board. How many people do I need to get to MEPS? How do I get their kits done? You're thinking short term, and you're reacting to the circumstances. You're looking at what's the next step because in the, and in the past climate, you were constantly just working what's walking your door. There was a lot of that. But the, even the problem with that is you're not necessarily finding the quality that the Navy wants, right? Who's your customer? Navy. 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 And the Navy, who's going to be better? That mechanical engineer sitting in the lab, not having time to come find you, or the person that's walking in your office looking for a job? Where's the quality? Mechanical. 
sitting in the engineering lab, right? So where do you need to be? You need to be on campus talking to that person because the person the Navy wants isn't the guy who couldn't get a job or the lady who just got fired. You're looking for someone who has quality skill sets that's marketable but wants to apply their skills to serve their country. Customer service and processing each year time. What just happened to the Gen Off mission this fiscal year? Session. What does that mean? So they have to ship and graduate. Okay, so we had an application goal. It means we had to get a certain number of applications to make our goal by category. The problem with that is, just because you get an application doesn't mean they get selected. Even if they get selected, many people weren't actually shipping because we didn't, we weren't counting success based on people showing up to boot camp. Or, excuse me, not point boot camp, showing up to OCS. What is your job as an officer recruiter? To create naval officers, not generate kids. So we shifted back. So if you're going to be a general recruiter, raise your hand. Your mission has shifted from talking to as many people as you can to getting rid of the people that you don't want to talk to and talking to the right people. Who's a nuke recruiter, an engineer recruiter? Your job is to work together. Because the way you work in gen off recruiting is you shoot for the nuke and everybody else falls out. Mm -hmm. Mechanical engineer, 2.6. If you're thought about flying, that's the way your job's going to be, right? When I used to interview and hire recruiters, for the candidate program, I would interview each of them and ask them if they're interested in getting a master's. How many of you have or are interested in getting a master's? What do you want to get in it? Any idea? Organizational leadership. Leadership, MBA, those are the types of things you're looking at, right? Well, welcome to your practical MBA because you have just purchased a franchise in your own business and that's what you're going to do. You're going to create a business because you have to figure out marketing, you have to figure out sales, and you have to conduct customer service. The only thing you don't have to do is develop a product. You've just purchased a franchise, and your job is to learn how to run a business. And that's what we're going to help you do a little bit. We're going to help you significantly with the marketing side of that today. <coughs> right? You have to think and act like an entrepreneur. Anybody ever seen a, a, like a life, life story or, or a documentary on Bruce Lee? Mm -hmm. okay, Bruce Lee talked about Kung Fu and how Kung Fu there was no defensive movement in that martial art. Like karate, you know, you have a block, right? Every move in Kung Fu came with an offensive purpose. So if you were blocking, you are blocking to execute a punch in some way, shape, or form. There was no action you should take in recruiting, even processing an administration that doesn't involve lead generation. We're going to talk about how you turn processing the lead generation in this meeting today. Okay? You want to think about building relationships with your COIs, and how do we categorize COIs? You're going to think about short-term, getting, getting that kit done, but how to use that kit to generate long-term relationships and more applications. And then we're going to talk about a system that you, that you can use, apply, to build a constant basis of referrals. Because referrals will increase your quality of life. Okay, who's, who is John Wooden? UCLA. Okay, UCLA. Coach. That's okay. what we'll go. All right, John Wooden. What's he, what's he famous for? Uh, the longest winning streak taking that team at Kareem Abdul Jabbar. The most consecutive victories of any NCAA basketball coach before the, uh, John Calatari, is that his name? Uh, the, the, the UConn coach. Okay. So, what about Bill Belichick? What's he famous for? Okay. Other than cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Championships? He's, fa he's famous for championships, right? He's famous for, for, for being on the coattails of, of Tom Brady. No, he, uh, <laughs> what does he do better than anybody else? Well, Develop players. I think he does that fine. That's, that's true. But what does he do? He watches game film and takes away your best option. Forces you to win with something other than what your go-to is. So he watches game film and strategizes. John Wooden didn't do that. He never watched game film. He taught fundamentals. And that's all this is, is fundamentals. I've given this presentation to CRS for 15 years in recruiting, and every single one of them is in there nodding their head and going, wow. Yeah, I do that, I do that. So here's what I want to say. I don't want you to pat yourself on the back about the things in this presentation that you already do, I've done in the past. I want you to ask yourself, what things in here that I can apply to my job to do better? If you're brand new, that's easy. The full toolkit's available for you. But if you haven't done this before, but if you have done this before, there's a danger of going, oh, I do that, oh, I do that, and miss the things that you aren't doing where you can take your job to the next level, all right? So, what's OREMPS? Have you guys talked about that? Mm -hmm. You're graduating tomorrow, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's where you have 
have your COIs listed. Your COIs, right? Okay. So it's 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 where your COIs reside, right? And the information about your COIs. It's a list of relationships, not just names. In that, you have a list of all these different things, but you have notes about your interactions with those COIs, and that is going to be very critical. Documenting your experience while you while you've been out visiting and making contact and developing these folks is going to be critical to your success because that's the relationship piece. And I'll, I'll give you some examples in a minute. So, how many of you have a fully developed ORAMS? Okay, you do, right? You should. I, should, I was hoping to see at least one hand because the person in the room with a brief thumb should have some of that, right? How do you build? So, you're brand new. What are you going to do? What's the first few things you're going to do when you get started? You're going to go in and see if any of the people before you... Okay, you're going to see what exists. You're going you're to see what's in that ORAMS. And I'm going to tell you, unfortunately, a large majority of you are going to see what? Nothing. Nothing. Like little or nothing or, or stuff that's not even real. Just stuff they've put in there to try and generate a passing grade on an inspection. They've taken it at this administrative burden instead of using it as a tool like it's designed to do. So how do you build it? So you get in there and you have a nice, fresh, brand new, pristine old ramps. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, you go out and meet people? You have to generate COIs. So yeah, but how do you do that? So Check your schools. Schools, schools? okay. Website. You're going to build, sort, and qualify. You're going to build it, and as you're building it, you're going to sort it and qualify based on how much, how successful that person is going, how much success that person is going to translate to, I guess is a good way of putting it. And then how much time and energy are you going to invest into that relationship? And you'll find that some of the most powerful relationships you'll generate will, down the road, require the least amount of time. So here's how you can start. Who's going to be reserved? Who's reserve focused in here? All right. You're going to be reserve focused? The gen off? Yes. Okay. And medical? Collegiates and cell res. These are huge. If you have collegiates, what's a collegiate? So he's already collegiate program, which means what? What programs are those? HSCP. 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 Now HPSP, that's kind of an odd animal, but you can't use it because do you manage HPSP? No. no. UMED does. But you can get a list of them, and you should know who they are in your schools because they're still referral sources. Alright, what happens if a HSCP or a new pop refers you somebody? They go up. What's their base pay? E6. E6. What do they become? E7. How many E7s do you think exist in our collegiate pool right now? Zero. Attention, Nala. If you left PT gear in the mess, please come to admin. Less than 5%. So what does that mean? We're not, right here. We're not tracking them or they're not to We are not generating referrals. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, high priority programs. You said go online. You need to assess your territory. Hopefully it's already been established. That ORAM says at least got the educational institutions in there. But you need to figure out where the schools are that you want to go and then start to develop those COIs there. Now, who here is going to uh, a remote location? Anybody going to like St. Louis or something like that? Okay, you, you may have some school, you may be the new pop coordinator for your district and have a school that's four hours away. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's not a good school. If it's a good school, you have to figure out how you're going to activate that school and maintain relationships with something that's four hours away. You can't afford to be there once a week. You probably can't even afford to be there once a month unless it's generating tons of referrals and you're going there to meet with applicants, right? And then low priority programs. Let me ask you this. Can we, can we put a nurse in from the University of Phoenix? A, a nursing student just graduated from University of Phoenix. Can, we, can that person receive a commission in the Navy? No. Is it accredited? Yeah. It is accredited. So, can you put a student from a graduate from the University of Phoenix in the Navy as a nurse? You absolutely can. Now, do you spend time prospecting there? No. That's the difference. You're not going to go there trying to generate COIs. A lot of ADN nurses are qualified nurses, and they go get their BSN at University of Phoenix. They have all their nursing credentials, they're licensed, they just need a, that BSN instead of an ADN. That way they can get a commission or advance in management. What you'll find here are a lot of nurses, one of the best places I found for reserve nurses, 
the VA. The VA hospitals. Okay. So this is what ORAMS looks like. So I'm not. Why? This is a medical, actually a dental, ORAMS. And over here is highlighted March. Why? What happens in March? Match day. That's where medical students or dental students find out what residency program they're going to be going to. What would be the benefit for, say this is HPSV Medical, of going to match day at Harvard? There's a whole bunch of folks who are going to have an MD next to their name in about a month and a half going to a residency program. What programs would you recruit if they're a resident? CMS. CMS, CMS and FAP. Exactly. Right? So I'm going to translate this over to, to engineering because I think engineering is the best example. Uh, engineering, gen off, nuke, the whole thing. When I say nuke recruiting, I'm talking nuke, gen off, the whole gamut. Uh, when is the best time to recruit nukes? Freshman orientation? Well, when can they sign up? Midway through, through, the Midway sophomore through their year. sophomore year, right? So the best time to find nukes is in the career fair season. Every college has career fairs in September, October time frame. So if you've got a career fair in September, September 15th, what should you be doing? What do you need to do to be successful at this career fair? Just think about it. Right? Show up. Right, right. You need to get your tablecloth, your rads. Absolutely. So you need to have your, your rads, you know, your uniform, tablecloth, <laughs> your little display board, right? Your pop-up display. <coughs> what about out here in April? Plan and budget. Market. You need to pay for it. You know, how many good schools are in Philadelphia? Temple, uh, Drexel, I mean there's, there's a ton of great schools in Philly, right? You know how many career fairs they did this year? You know why? They didn't plan. Ooh. That's bad news. I had a conversation with their CEO, and it was somewhat one way, right? Just didn't plan. So you need to pay for it. Now, how, what's a career fair look like? Anybody been to one? What does a career fair look like? Just a bunch, a bunch of tables kids and a lot of people around. Tables, kids, right? Collecting gifts. Yeah. Collecting gifts. Kids walking around, exactly. <laughs> just, just looking for look, looking for jobs, looking for internships, looking for scholarships. So what about medical? Well, medical career fairs happen in the spring. And what are they looking at when you go to like a medical career fair? At an undergraduate school, what are they looking for? Scholarships. It's all colleges and scholarships, right? So here's what you need to be doing. You need to be planning 180 days out. So if it's in September, say June, maybe July time frame, 60, 90 to 100 days out, you're, you're going to email all your COIs. You're going to prep them. Let them know that there's a career fair coming in October and that you want to make, sure, make your presence known. You're going to start asking for presentations. What are some what are some good venues or some good organizations you can target for presentations for a new career fair? Engineering, Engineering, Engineering societies, right? ASME, IEEE. Anybody know Tau Beta Pi is? So it's your engineering fraternity. Well, yeah, you're new, right? It is. It's not. It's not a fraternity. It's a. It's just an honor society. It's an honor society. <laughs> Everybody in Tau Beta Pi has to have an engineering degree, and depending on the school, like a 3.4 or 3.5 GPA. Would you want to talk to all those folks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> there's another one out there for civil engineering, Chi Epsilon, and there's some for electrical and mechanical. You need to know who those folks are. You need to get in, get in touch with your faculty members, and you need to touch with your co their coordinators for these different groups and you want to let them know that you're looking to do presentations, okay? What else can you do? Okay, so you want to develop a flyer. So you set up a presentation, you get that all locked in. It's September, now in, uh, in August, you want to generate a flyer and you want to send it out to your COIs announcing your presence. So the career fair is from 1,000 to 1,400. And now you've got a presentation at 1,700. 
What happens about 1700? Food, right? You got food there. So you've got all of your all of your organizations, ASC, ASME, SHIP, what's SHIP? Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers? Okay. You've got all these different honor societies, all these different organizations invited out to this presentation. Maybe one of them is hosting it. Maybe it's their quarterly meeting or their monthly meeting. You've got all the, you, you send flyers to your COIs because what happens if you send a mail out or an email to, to a student? Shift the leak, right? But if it comes from the professor, what's going to happen? Chances are they're going to read it. So who else are you contacting in office? What's that? Career center? Other student organizations? How often do you have to see your collegiates face to face? Once a quarter. Every other month. When are you going to see them face to face? At that career fair. Hey, little Johnny. Unless you're preparing for a test, taking a test, or working on a major paper, guess where you're going to be? You're going to be wearing that fine navy blue and blue and green or blue and white. I'm sorry, blue and yellow. Polo shirt that we gave you when you got accepted to the New Park program, you're going to be standing next to me at the career fair. Why? What's that? They've done what the other people want to do. One, who's paying them? We are. <laughs> Second reason, what's the benefit to them? A referral. Bingo. Their friend sees them, walks up to them, has a conversation with them. They join the Navy. What happens? $400 favorites. Right? So they're going to be with you, standing with you. The day of the career fair. So, you start to see this? There's a checklist on the N31 website it's called the Career Fair Checklist. It goes through all of this. The nukes developed it. So it's in really big detail. So, that's what you're going to do. And, and here's what else you're going to do. You're going to contact your NTO, your nuclear trained officer that corresponds to your district, and make sure that somebody's at this career fair. If it's, if it's not a high level career fair, they probably won't go, but they will, they will go. They, they get in a suitcase in an airplane, like the 1st of September, and they don't get home until the middle of October. They're on the road for two months straight. And all they're doing is going from career fair to career fair to career fair to career fair to doing presentations. All you have to do is set it up. They'll come, stand there, and do the presentation. So, these are the things you do. Now, day of, day of, you pick the right uniforms. And here's my recommendation. Gen off recruiters, go with your new recruiters, and have a variety of uniforms. A lot of people say, oh, I'd like to be in a polo shirt and slash because they're going to be more approachable. That's, that's fine and dandy, but at some point they're going to have to wear that uniform. Okay. So I think that you should have a mixture. You might have somebody in a flight suit, somebody, uh, somebody in a, you know, type threes, someone in khakis maybe, someone in dress uniform. That dress uniform attracts a lot of attention. You want to have a uniform presence there. Remember, you're going to have your collegiates there in their polo shirts. So that's covered. Now, at the career fair, you're going to have two folders and a sign-up sheet. Talk to Joanne. Hey, so, uh, Amanda. You're going to talk to Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Da, 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 da. She gives you your resume. 2.7. Math. Great. Nice to talk to you. Blah, blah, blah. Here you go. Jen off recruiter is with you. Let me refer you over to Lieutenant Thompson. Lieutenant Thompson, da 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 da, da have a conversation. 3.6, mechanical engineer. Talk to him about the new program. Pull out from underneath the table a clipboard. And on that clipboard, do you know that you can set up an interview room on campus? So you prearrange an interview room here too. And you have interview slots from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the afternoon for the next two days. You take that nuke, and you get them committed to an interview time right then, right there. You take a flyer announcing your, your presentation, free pizza, bring your friends. And you give that to everybody. But only the people you want to talk to get that interview slot. If you do this, show up to the career fair or the presentation that night, nuke does a presentation, then you come back over and wake them up because they're pretty dry, right? They're not, they're not always the most entertaining speakers. 
People line up to ask questions. You have your, your new box standing there with you. They're answering questions. Maybe you give them some time to talk. And then you do the same thing. 2.7, put them in. So if, you, if, you're, if you're there by yourself, folder A, nukes, folder B, gen off. And you do that same thing at the presentation that evening. And then again, someone who's qualified, schedule them for an interview. If you do this correctly, <coughs> by the end of your career fair season, you have 20 to 30 applications and applicants who are interested in moving forward in the process. Make sense? That's how you do a career fair. And the reason there's dates on here isn't just so you can see about a historical. It's as much a planning tool as anything else. So you should have your saved one from previous years, and you should have the one that you're working this year moving forward as you're progressing through the year. With all of your career fairs, all of your rents planned out. And the way you know, how to, you know how to do notes in Excel, right? How you click on it, you right click, and you create notes. You'll have the dates. Maybe you have a, uh, whatever it is. If it was a COI visit next to a name, you'll have that. But if it's a career fair, you'll have the whole column filled out because on that day, you're contacting your COIs up here saying, hey, if you're not able to swing by, I'll stop by and see you while I'm there. When you go to this career fair, you see every single COI while you're there. What does that accomplish for you? That one gets the career fair taken and it gets your grip and grin in personal time with every single COI. You'll get to the point, if you're doing this correctly, that you announce the career fair is coming, they will come by and see you. Not only will they come by and see you, sometimes they will have referrals in tub. Oh, this is little Johnny I was talking to you about on the phone. He brought him over here to talk to you. Oh, little Johnny's in class with so-and-so, boom. So as you see that relationship build and see the future going forward, okay? That's career first. So how do you start developing your COIs? Website, we talked about this, right? Now this is a very time-consuming process. Many of you will have stash ensigns, or there'll be folks that are taken off the bag for medical reasons, or people who are stashed with you, you know, from the NAS, or, or sometimes people got in trouble or whatever, but those are folks who can do busy work for you. You can have some of your busy work folks just go to the website, pick a program, I think this was physics, and then just start building email lists and start sending out emails, little lots, little groups, right? Just to start to develop some COIs. You'll get some people that'll say, hey, you know, I'm not interested, how did you get my information, or please don't contact me, and you gotta make sure you maintain that do not contact list. But you'll be surprised. Some of the most valuable COIs would be the, the executive assistant. Oh, my, my, my husband's retired military. Or I, I went to uh, Mobile to the medical school up there, and there was a reservist. Hey, I'm a naval reservist. I'm a lieutenant commander in the Navy Reserve. Oh, wow. It's a great COI we developed there. And that's how you can generate starting off. And what, well, so what do you send to them? I've got a, a new recruiter introduction letter I'll show you. Okay, so here's where we get into a little bit of the salesy piece. What you say and what you do. Tried and true systems, you have to have a process. We'll, we'll, we'll get back into a little bit more of what you do, but I'm going to shift over to what you say. I mentioned earlier, uh, everybody you know should know that you're a recruiter. I, I still receive referrals all the time. I get people that call me. Uh, even when I, was, when I was not directly in recruiting, when I was a CEO of the NOSC, I would have an email or a phone call. Hey, I'm trying to find a recruiter. I just got a, I just got a phone call, actually it was an instant message on, on Facebook from a retired chief recruiter saying, hey, my neighbor's son is working at HPS and they're having some issues, can you help me out? Just constantly, everybody knows me as a recruiting guy, right? So these are the three must-have dialogues, the mayoral campaign. When you say mayoral, what do you picture when I say mayoral campaign? What do you picture? Visibility tour, you know, kissing babies, kiss and babies. shaking hands, kissing babies. Hi, my name is so and so. I'm running for Bay. How do I get your vote? Exactly. The gentlest of reminders, and then the three minute up I'll start with the mayoral campaign. It's, it's designed it's just to build your database. Just, it's an opening conversation when you're trying to start with a COI, potential COI. So, uh, you're in the front row. Go ahead and read that for me. If you or someone else know, if, if you or someone else you know, we're interested in the military. Do you have a recruiter? Will you refer them to? Okay. Pretty simple. Pretty unintrusive, right? Yeah. So, hey, chief, if, if you or somebody else you knew were interested in the military, who would you send them to? It's a gentle, opening question, right? Yeah. You'll get a number of responses. What are the responses you can get from that? No, I've never thought about it, right? Yeah. What's another one? I don't know. 
I don't, I don't have one. How about, I've never sent someone to the military. I've gotten that one. Uh, or I'll send them to the Air Force. I got that one. <laughs> and desks, one office, the next office out. I got those in successive offices at Loma Linda University. This, why do you say if you or someone else you can? Because you're asking for a referral. But you're also asking them. I asked this question of a doctor who was an attending physician. What does that mean? What's a resident? Someone who's doing medical school, training. getting their training. So Working on training. So they're in school getting progress, progressing towards a specialty. What's an attending? The, the boss of that resident. It's the teaching te uh, doctor, right? I asked this question of an attending physician who is now in the Navy Reserve. Open the door for that individual. Now you ask the Dean of Engineering who's 55. They're, they're not joining the Navy, they're not joining the Navy Reserve. We're not looking for 55 year old professors. But you ask that of a 55 year old orthopedic surgeon, you know, we've got room for you, right? If you were someone else you knew were interested in the military, who would you send them to? I, I, the woman said, I would send them to the Air Force. Why is that? Because my husband's a retired master sergeant. And they're here all the time. What does that tell you? You're not. We're not. The next answer to that was, well, what would it take for the Navy to be on that list? And then you just open the dialogue. Well, what do you have? What's, what's the benefit? HBSP, HSCP, da 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 down the list, right? You just, just open it. What you're doing is you're opening the dialogue to talk about what it is that we do. Next one. Chief, read that one. Um, oh, by the way. I'm never too busy for any of your referrals. So, the history. I was the OPO in 2005. There are people today that see me and say that to me. Joking. Like other naval officers, other recruiters, folks who are COs now who are recruiters when I was a recruiter. Oh, by the way, I'm never too busy for your referrals. That was my tagline because I, I flew all over the country for years, for three or four years, teaching this presentation to districts, to conferences. You need to ask for referrals from all of your COs. And this is a very unintrusive way to say it. If your goal is that every time they see you, they're thinking about a referral. You want it to be a friendly joke between you and that professor, or you and that doctor, or you and that nurse. Uh, you don't want to be so uncomfortable that they don't want to pick up the phone when they see your number. But you want them to, oh, Lieutenant Jones is coming over for a career fair. What was the name of that kid that totally would be perfect for his program? You want to be thinking of. Okay? And here's the last one. So, who's a medical recruiter? All right, I want you to, I want you to develop the scenario in your head. You, elevator's open, you're at a hospital, you walk in, you turn around, and right behind you walks in a white lab coat, and on it says, Chief Resident Orthopedic Surgery. Cool. <laughs> what are you going to say? I don't want you to say it. I want you to write it down. What are you going to say to that Chief Resident but orthopedic surgery. Now, gen off, new recruiters. Same thing happens. In walks Dean of Mechanical Engineering. What are you going to say? Okay, just a couple of minutes. Hey, scholarship coordinator in the local area. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm responsible for identifying and assisting engineering students with the application process. How about this one? Would you know of any students that would benefit from $5,000 a month in guaranteed placement upon graduation? What are the two things that educational institutions are trying to achieve? Job graduates and placements. Graduates and placements. I'm the Navy Scholarship Coordinator. Right? You say the word recruiter, that's fine. I mean, you're there, it's in the process. So don't, don't say it, and they go, oh crap, I said it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, hey. Stick the dude, but I said, hey, I'm the, I'm the Navy Scholarship Coordinator here for, for, for medical students, and, and uh, I'm on campus meeting with individuals who might have an interest in having full ride to medical school and guaranteed placement with a 90% placement in residency programs uh, in their careers. Do you know students that might be interested in that program? Does that sound canned or hurt, rehearsed or anything like that? No. 
Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, you guys have been on the bag. You know what, I'll come back to that. Put it where it's important. It's important to them. Graduation, placements. You're giving them money to finish, and you're giving them a guaranteed job. What does a Navy Nuke junior officer at the seven-year point make? Close to 100,000. Close to 100,000? Try upwards of 100. In San Diego, for example, throw it a BAH. Try like 135. Is that about right? In San Diego, with a BAH is 3,000, right? They make more than 0405s that don't have new pay, sub pay, C pay. I mean, they make bang, right? What is a mechanical engineer five years after graduating? What is a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer just graduating? Seventy thousand. What just graduating? Fifty. What do they make? Fifty to sixty. Fifty. Sixty to eighty. Sixty to eighty. That's an electrical engineer. Some of those make less. What do they make five, seven years down the road? Maybe ten thousand dollars more. They don't advance that much, right? They go from being an engineering technician or whatever. I mean, how fast do they advance? I don't know. I would say every three to five years, sir. Okay. My brother's in tech, so that's what I see. So, take a civil engineer. Less. Less. A lot less, mm -hmm. right? Navy Nuke Lieutenant, $130,000, $135,000 a year. You're selling a dream here. So, you are a recruiter and you're getting ready for an interview. This person you met at Career Fair, you met him, you blueprinted him, no bed problems, no this. You're, you're, not gonna, you're not sitting with him. With, uh, without able, you know, knowing that they're, they're ready. They're, you're sitting with them because you know that they're, they're, they're probably going to be good at MEPS, they've got a good GPA, a good school. You want to get them ready to go. What are you doing? Preparing for that interview. I'm talking to experienced recruiters. What are you doing right now? Preparing for that interview. Are they going to walk in the room? Honestly, I'm starting to prepare kit work. So you're starting to prepare kit work, you're right? You're starting to work for those types of things. Do you guys ever rehearse? Do you rehearse your interviews before they happen? This is the biggest thing that officer recruiters fail at. They say, we don't need sales, and that is wrong. You need to practice. How many of you have ever had an argument with your spouse? <laughs> we'll talk about it when I get home. Clint, what do you do all the way home? You <laughs> Okay, you walk in there ready and you get Sideswipe, right? <laughs> or even worse, you walk in ready to go, and it, they walk up to you, smile, and give you a kiss. <clears throat> right? I mean, just, you rehearse the argument. And that is unimportant. It's, are we going to have pork or steak for dinner in your argument, right? This is a career decision for this future officer, right? If you sound like an idiot because you didn't rehearse, that's on you. Practice. Role play. Talk it out. The reason I am, people say you're very eloquent, you're very well spoken, you're not duplicatable. I've been teaching the same presentation for 15 years. I figured you're pretty good at it by this point, right? <laughs> so we're going to just go just go around the room. We'll start here in the second row. You need to have this dialogue down because this <coughs> is bread and butter in your referral generation process. Go ahead and start over here. Educate your application on how recruiting works. Go ahead and read that. Most recruiters spend the majority of their time prospecting for new applicants. Things like cold calling, door knocking, advertising, mail outs, etc. Educate how you work. Next. I devote myself to serving the needs of my applicant before, during, and after they join. All I ask is that while I'm working with you, I would like you to refer me to people of comparable quality to yourself who are considering the military and would appreciate this same level of attention. A little PSS in here? <laughs> Outline the benefits to your applicant. You see, as long as you and my other applicants keep referring me, I don't have to go out prospecting like everyone else, and I can do an even better job working for you. And then the last piece? Does, it, Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You got the easy guy. You got the soft one. <laughs> you see how we're working here? What are we doing? Making them the Creating the connections. <laughs> We're creating an expectation. You will give me referrals. Remember, who is in the position of authority here? The recruiter. We are. 
We're trying to sell them and we want to make a sale. The, the danger a salesperson gets into is they turn the tables and then they become the person on the receiving end rather than the controlling agent in the conversation. Okay? You are in control. You are the person holding the goods that they want and they have to come through you to get there. And it sounds kind of robotic, right? But you just got to practice it. How do you do it? You practice it. Hey, John, I just want to let you know. My counterparts in recruiting spend a lot of time trying to find qualified people like you. They're, they're running around, they're cold calling, they're sending out mail outs, they're doing all these different activities. I work different. I'm talking with you because you came to me through someone else. My goal is that I can focus on getting you in the process, through the process, and getting you accepted in the program. I, I'm expecting you to tell your friends about the program so that I don't have to go and find them on my own. I can give you better customer service, make the process better on you, and you can make my job easier. Does that make sense? That's how it works, right? And set that expectation. Put in there about the referral program, promotions, and all those different things. So, did you guys talk about kits and stuff like that? How many, letters of, how many letters of recommendation are required for a new pond? That's a trick question. Zero. You will ask for four. Hi, little Johnny. Here's what I need. I need the names, phone number, email addresses of four prominent professors in your academic program. What did I just do? I had four COIs. I'm going to contact them on your behalf. I'm going to sit down with them, explain to them what the program is, provide them some guidance on how to write a letter of recommendation, and ensure that they help you get in the name. Because here's the thing, what happens if they don't get accepted for new? You lose those whatever recommendation for aviation or for CEC or something else. You are going to create a COI. Now you're going to call that COI on the phone, you're going to go and you're going to set an appointment, you're going to sit down with them, and you're going to meet with them. What are you going to bring to that interview? You're going to bring a flyer on the new car program. And if you have collegiates, you're going to bring the names of the other kids in the school that are already enrolled. Heck, if you can, bring one of the collegiates. If that collegiate's had that professor, bring that collegiate with you. And then you're going to meet with them and you're going to generate COIs. I can't even take credit for that. One of my old recruiters said, oh, this is what I do. I ask for letters of recommendation from everybody and then I go out and meet with them and I generate COIs. He's now the CEO of, of NOS Fort Carson, by the way. He's done pretty well in his career. But as a recommendation and transfers. All right. Now you've got some names. What happens if you go to the career fair season? What happens if you do all this? You come out of the career fair season with 20 applicants. And you get four letters of recommendation. And say there's, you know, just, a little, just, just for assumption, there's no overlap. You get four letters of recommendation from 20 applicants. How many COIs did you just generate? A lot. All right? You generate 800? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? 80? to maintain contact. Generally, those CEOs can take a lot of time, but if they're all at the same educational institution, you meet them all on the same day, right? So that's not that difficult. So we gotta develop some contact systems. Calls and newsletters. So we'll talk about the newsletter system. Most districts that I work with and I talk with when I go meet with them, I'm, I'm not a senior member of the inspection team. There's two of us. The CEO here and I are, are the two senior inspectors. And when I go out and meet with the OPOs and I talk with them about how they should generate their departments, and usually they, they're focused on nuke gen off, medical, and then like reserve, and that's how they kind of build their teams. So you have program leads. You want to introduce yourself as a brand new recruiter. So this is something every single one of you wants to do. You want to develop your COIs, you want to introduce yourself as a new recruiter. If you have folks in your in your OREMPs, you want to present this to all of your new COIs, the ones that you're just in, they're, they're brand new, they just, they just got turned over to you because you took over. And then 
if you've been in the field and you met a, a six COI six months ago and you never called them, which happens all the time, you're kind of ashamed, right? Hey, great, I'm looking forward to working with you. Looking, uh, oh, I haven't talked to that person in six months. How do I get in touch with them? Well, you're going to confess. It's called a confession letter. And here's what it looks like. Where did I end up? Yeah. All right, Lieutenant, read this. And, 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 and personalize it. You're a new recruiter, right? Yes, sir. All right, I want you to go ahead and read this as a new recruiter, inserting the, the appropriate answers that applies to you. Dear Dr. Jones, the reason for this letter is to introduce myself as the new uh, nuclear recruiter for the San Francisco area. I'll be taking over for uh, Seaman Schmuckatelli. Sorry. Uh, and I'm, I'm new. I'm brand new and would like to stop by and introduce myself. I'm making a commitment to provide excellent service to all my applicants, administrators, and faculty to ensure um, professors, sorry, students are informed of the benefits of Navy scholarship programs. In suit, a little bit about the program here. New Pot students receive full pay and benefits, active duty service time, six well, San Francisco, like six thousand dollars a month. Okay, next. Yes, sir. Uh, I make a constant effort to improve the level of service I provide to you because in recruiting, the most profound assets I possess are your respect and trust. I'll contact you soon to see if I can be of any help or meet any of your needs. Yours sincerely, Lieutenant Junior Grade Kevin. Next. Oh, by the way, if you know someone thinking of the military who would appreciate this kind of service I offer, or, you know, I'd love to help them. As soon as these people come in mind, just give me a call with their name and business number. I'll be happy to follow up and tend to their needs. That's it. Also, on the M31 SharePoint, there's this, this letter, and then the second page is a confession letter. It basically says, hey, Dr. Jones, you and I met several months ago. I must apologize for not maintaining better contact with you. I really do value the relationship that, that we would, I would like to build with you. And the potential gain that your students could receive from scholarship coordinations and blah 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 blah, blah, blah the same thing goes on. Okay? You're introducing newsletters. And this is now, this is how old this presentation. TMS was TAMP back then, okay? So and we don't do uh, reserve navettes anymore, naval veterans leaving. That's all that's all CTO. So that's that's how long this presentation's been. So this is an example, new surface. Would we ever send a letter for new surface? No, we wouldn't, because they, they they fill up easy. But now this is a change. Uh, new new constructor, naval reactors, new invite, medical programs here, and then reserve programs here. So that's an example of some newsletter topics. And, and my recommendation is do these quarterly. So now you have 80 COIs. How do you maintain updated information and contact with them? You you put them on their newsletter list, and once a quarter they get a newsletter. You don't have to talk to them every single month. You talk to them. You'll probably go out to the schools, each school once a year, or tw uh, probably twice a year. If you have 80 COIs spread amongst four schools, now how hard is it to see? Most of you won't have more than four, maybe five major schools. You see them all in the same one or two days. It becomes a lot easier. And quarterly, you send them a newsletter. So let's talk about generating a newsletter. What's value to them in a newsletter? What do you guys do when you receive, how many of you ever bought a house? You, you keep getting these newsletters from your real estate agent trying to get you to send them referrals, right? What do you do when you get those? Yeah. Tear them away. Yeah. What about Facebook? When you see advertisements on Facebook, if, but what do you look at? Posts that have pictures of people you know, right? Mm -hmm. So picture this. You see on the front of the newsletter, uh, Washington Monument, one of the students you wrote, wrote a letter of recommendation for. <coughs> Just haven't been accepted to the new park program. What does that do to you? It cements that relationship with the recruiter. Okay? So this is an example of one. One of the best testimonies I have, Loma Linda University, it's a Methodist, I think it's a Methodist college, uh, down in Southern California. How much time do I have? You doing all right? Yes, sir. Okay. It is a medical school in Southern California. It's a Methodist college. Uh, in it is everything you can think of. There's nursing programs. Uh, physician programs, there's medical service corps like uh, respiratory therapy, there's, there's uh, 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 clinical psychology, there's everything that the Navy is looking for down there, pharmacy, all of it, right? We're at Loma Linda University, and I use this as an example. It's the same place where I got, I would never send someone to the military, and I would send them to the Air Force, right? We, were, we did a blitz to try and develop this, this territory. 
we set up a, 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 a display about the size of this classroom with tables and forced interaction. We had music and we had food. We had t-shirts, squishy balls, everything you can imagine. Set up on the lawn outside of chapel. Every Tuesday and Thursday, all students have to go to chapel. So from 11 to 12, they're in chapel, and they roll out of chapel hungry. The doors open up, we crank the music, and we have a feeding frenzy, right? We've got a thousand kids pouring out onto the lawn alone in London and quad, and just all this activity going, and then we shut the music off about two to three minutes into it. So listen, we have to have your attention, we can settle everybody down. We commission a brand new three-year HPSB scholarship winner right there on the lawn. Okay? Right. We had a lieutenant, uh, Lori, I can't remember her last name. Uh, she's the nurse. She's a nurse. She's a medical recruiter, and she's giving a big old ROTC check that says three hundred thousand dollars, and swearing in this this young lady and getting and awarding her her three year scholarship that she had earned right there on the lawn. So what's the next thing on the newsletter? That picture, right there on the cover. Who does it go to? It goes to all of her, uh, all of her professors that wrote letters of recommendation and stuff. That's exactly the type of thing that you're looking to do and accomplish. All right. Every nuke that uh, gets accepted in the NUPOC program, they get a bonus, right? They get a signing bonus. And now you can't bring cameras into the naval reactors, so we can't watch them when they're when they're enlisting them, right? We're enlisting them into the into the NUPOC program. You can't take cameras into there. But every single one of them, they, they, they get pictures with them. The NUPOCs take pictures. All you have to do is get those pictures from the NUPOC and put that in your newsletter. So funny, funny sidebar story, right? So the way the nukes get this is just completely off subject. It's just reminding me. When they get done with their interview, we, we brief them, they do their technical interviews, and in the afternoon they interview with the admiral, they get the thumbs up and the thumbs down. We tell them, don't shake hands with the admiral, right? It's just, you know, he's sitting across the desk from him. Most of the time he's in civilian clothes, but sometimes in uniform. This kid goes in there, he's sitting down, and the admiral goes, well, congratulations. Welcome to the new pop order. He doesn't always tell them. As a matter of fact, when I went through, they didn't. You went to his A and the A told you. And he jumps up and he goes, thank you, sir. Oh, my God. He pulled his hand back and he freaked out because you're not supposed to shake the animal's hand, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh. And he looks up and the animal's busting him. <laughs> animal stands up and goes, congratulations, then get the hell out of here. Right? And, he, and he sends him out. By the time it took him, this was when he was old, old, over at, um, at uh, Old Naval Reactors. By the time he comes down a flight of stairs and into, into the conference room where everybody's on these letter, letter chairs up, they're yucking it up. The whole room erupts when he walks in because the A called him, you're never going to believe what happened. And every, by the time he walked in the room, we were all dying when he walked in the room. And he's all embarrassed and we're all shaking his hand and everything. One of the funniest things I've ever experienced in, in naval reactors. <laughs> levity was allowed. Okay, so go back and guess where you can find a copy of this exact document. And 31 SharePoint. We did it in San Diego. We had all the medical recruiters on one side where they were located and then we had the, the chief, you may see the chief there, Chief, chief uh, Edwards maintained the newsletter and got inputs and then we, we did a newsletter quarterly. As a matter of fact, we did it more frequently for the medical program, so they had a tremendous amount of success and they, they wanted to get out picture after picture after people getting accepted. And what's the second page of your newsletter? A shameless advertisement. And you send this out to your professors. What, what, what might this be? Well, an announcement of the career fair. It could come to the point where you have a two or three page newsletter and they're flipping through it looking for their students. That's what you want to be in, right? So you send it out. Here's, this, this is how old this presentation is. That's Newpoc pay in San Diego when this presentation was in. That's a long time ago, right? That's what BAH is now in San Diego. <laughs> for an 06, anyway. Yes. All right, uh, follow up calls. So now you just sent this newsletter out. Where do we end up? Next. Hi, Dr. Van Dyke. This is Lieutenant Wiltshire calling. How are you? How is your family? Well, Dr. Van Dyke, the reason I'm calling is that I just wanted to know if you received my letter on the... with the picture of Andrew in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for the letter of recommendation you provided. It was instrumental in his success. And here's the thing. Maybe it wasn't. But maybe it was. Maybe it boosted in Andrew's conference. Maybe it made Andrew more confident in his ability to be a new pop because his instructor felt that highly, right? Never undersell the value of anything that you do. Okay, go ahead and read the next one. If I can ever be of assistance, please don't hesitate to call. I want to make sure you know how much I value the opportunity to work with you in helping your students. It was a pleasure helping Andrew receive his scholarship, and I look forward to serving you and your students now and in the future. 
My success is built by working with people like yourself and taking care of you, your students and associates. Where are I leave off? Oh, by the way, Dr. Van Dyke, if you have any other students looking for scholarships, I'd love to help them. So when you come across these people, just give me a call with their name and business number, and I'll be happy to follow up and take care of them for you. Does that sound good to you? Okay, great. Thanks, Dr. Van Dyke. I'll be in touch. Take care. There you go. So, you met with a student, you got an email phone number, you went and met with the COI, right? You met with the COI, correspond with them via an email, a couple emails back and forth, you sent them a newsletter, and now you called them. How many contacts have you had with that COI? You've already made three contacts, not including the email exchanges, right? Your name is becoming something they recognize now. So, calls and items of value. What's the item of value? Newsletter. Newsletters are valuable. Maybe they can change, you know, tell you updates and changes on the program. Even interview dates. So taking care of them, personal notes and pop fives. How many of you own a home? How many of you get tons and tons of mailing advertising? How many of you sort your mail over the trash? Right? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I, I have a recycling bin right in my garage. I walk out to the mailbox, I come in, and this stuff doesn't even make it into the house. American Express, uh, Discover Car, you know, re refinance your house. They send in all this, all this marketing and advertising. Pull up a letter, it's addressed by hand. Has anybody in the room ever thrown away an envelope that was addressed by hand? Mm -hmm. Right? No. Personal notes. The benefit of a personal note, it is always, 100% of the time, read. How many of you sort your email? Shift delete. Does anybody know what shift delete is? What does that mean? What does shift delete and email mean? It doesn't even go into your delete box. It go away. It goes away forever. Now the danger of doing that is, oh crap, I needed that. That was an accident, right? But shift delete doesn't even send it to your trash. It just sends it into oblivion. <laughs> These will always be. It takes time. It means that you took the time to write out by hand a note to someone, and it leaves a lingering impact. When I was in San Diego from 1997 to 1999, I was the new recruiter. In my time in San Diego as a new recruiter, I probably wrote, I don't know, 15 engineers because I had Nuke and CEC. And I threw a couple of gen off bones to, to, to the next recruiter, to the gen off recruiter, my AOR. I had a relationship with the professor, I mean, with, a, with a dean, or not dean, she was a senior professor in the physics department at University of California, Irvine. If you know San Diego's territory, I lived in San Diego proper. Irvine's an hour, hour and a half north, right? It's on the very edge of our territory, butts right up against Los Angeles' territory. But I spent most of my recruiting time in Irvine because of this, this uh, COI I had named Robin. Roll the clock ahead. I leave NRD San Diego, and I transfer, go do some. I come back as the OPO, and I'm bringing the recruiter, who, by the way, is located on UCI's campus. We, we were able to get an office in the student union, which is on the edge of the campus, right there, near, near the housing, because of the success that I had while I was there. We were able to get an office funded there. Take him to meet Robin, and she doesn't even know who he is. And he's been there for two years. Robin has a personal note that I sent her from 1997. It's now 2005. She sent me six or seven referrals. It, it got to the point where I would show up in her office to visit her, and she would have people waiting with her to talk to me. It wasn't for anything other than that. that, that it was, we had a great relationship. She trusted me, and she knew the benefits. We had a guy, Pam, Pac Pham, I think his first name Pac, last name Pham, came back from OCS, bought his little Ensign mobile. What's that long was? It was a Honda Prelude, right? That's a long time ago. <laughs> Called me up. I drove up to Irvine. He took Robin and I out for lunch in his new Ensign mobile before he was going to new school. She still had the personal note, right? New additions to your database, your last contact, follow call. And what do you put in every personal note? Never too busy for any new referrals. I had, no joke, my recruiters, same recruiter that had the whole letter of recommendation thing, in his government vehicle, in the center console, was a 
box of personal notes. So you go, you meet, you meet with your seven COIs, you go back to your car, and while you're in your car, you write out the personal notes. When you're in the meeting, so I meet with you, spend 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes with you, that's all it takes. I leave your office, I go out, I go outside, before I go to my next appointment, I take detailed notes on our conversation. I go back to my car, I sit in my car, I write the personal notes, reference the conversation, go back to my office, and what do I do with that information? I put it in O ramps. Because now you have 80 COIs. Are you gonna remember who these people are? <laughs> no, you're gonna run out of you're gonna run out of inventory space. Someone's going to call you. Dr. Jones is going to call you. Gonna, uh, Dr. Jones, hold on. I'm right in the middle of something. Can I put you on hold for a minute? Put them on hold. Go to your oil ramps. Open up your oil ramps. Read the notes. Hey, Dr. Jones, it's great talking to you. Hey, looks like the Raiders are going to have to wait another year. Everybody thought John Gooden was the Messiah, <laughs> but apparently he wasn't. Mari Cooper, Khalil Mack, but, but at least you got draft choices, right? Ha, 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 right? But having that conversation communicates what? You remember them. You remember them. Not only you remember them, how about this one? How's your daughter? I understood that she was supposed to have surgery on her foot. She broke her ankle playing soccer. How's she going? She's doing great. Physical therapy is awesome. Thank you for asking. Right? That's in there. Who's your physical therapist? Exactly. <laughs> Future recruiter of the year. So this is an example of what a personal note looks like. Put your business card in there. Never too busy for interview referrals, right? Write it right on the envelope. I don't care. You want it to be the butt of a joke. Make sense? Yes. You met a COI? Student wants to interview four weeks later, six weeks later. You have now generated multiple contacts with this individual. Pop by system. I used to say this, my recruiters would come up to me, so what's, up, what's your plan for the week? We're going to go out to San Diego State? Great. What's your plan? We're going to go out and set up the table. No, you're not. You are never going to fruit stand. Fruit standing is done at a career fair, where people are coming to an event looking for a job. You don't go stand in the quad looking for applicants, because guess what? Where are the applicants that you want to talk to? They're in class or in the lab, right? They're not hanging out in the quad, right? You want to have appointments. You don't go anywhere without appointments. But if you have an appointment, say you have a legitimate appointment, your medical, your medical folks, you are going, every single physician kit requires peer referrals. Mm -hmm. You meet with your doctor and do their application for them. Let me just break this down. They're busy. You don't email to them, expect to send it. Now, you can, and if they send it back to you, congratulations, you're lucky. You, you, or you meet with them in person and have them fill it out by hand or email them to them, and then you go pick it up from them. But when you're going to go there, what do you do? You set up meetings with all your other COIs. You know so you're going to pop by. You never go to a campus without trying to get everybody that's there. I'm here to give that wonderful motivational talk I gave this morning, right? Well, what did I do? I booked it so that I could talk to you folks as well. I'm not going to come all the way down here and not get the maximum benefit of my time anywhere. My maximum benefit is staying here and talking with you folks and giving you this training. So the purpose of a pop is it deepens a relationship. Never come without bringing something. Pens are easy. Leave a pen with them. I'll tell you, you know what professors love, especially medical professors? Lanyards. They love them lanyards. We got, how much is an orthopedic surgeon? Uh, no, an anesthesiologist board certified in the trade. How much are they making? Any idea? Six hundred grand. Six to seven hundred thousand dollars a year. But man, they will scavenge those freebies <laughs> at a freaking conference. Like you're, you walk in there with a periodic table. Who uses a periodic table anymore? Nobody. Something navy, they love that stuff. You bring a t-shirt or a ball cap, they will wear the heck out of them, right? Unless it messes up your hair. <coughs> so, demonstrates you're investing your time to come see them. Schedule them consistently. Every time you have a career fair, again, visit everyone. And then follow up with a personal note. If you've sent, you know, one or two personal notes, maybe one a year or something like that, birthdays, things like that. Get their birthdays, send them a personal note on the birthday. Deepen that relationship by stopping by and talking to them and investing in the time and the relationship with them. All right, we're coming into the home stretch. Debt, COOX, and business lunches. So let's talk about 
community events. Deepens the sense of care and connection with you and each other. Well, let's step COI events, commission on site. The biggest mistakes that recruiters make is every HSCP, you have to enlist an OCS person before they go to OCS, right? Or a reserve. Who's reserve? You have to commission them to join the team. Here's what most recruiters do. They set up an appointment, they bring them to the district, and they enlist them or commission them at the district. And do it where they work. Let's go back to that new pop career fair. Letter of recommendation, personal meeting, all that different stuff. Hey, Dr. Jones, little Johnny actually got commissioned or got, got, got uh, enlisted out in, uh, in Washington, D.C. The little Tommy was, was, a, was, his, was a friend of his and he's going to get promoted. I would love to promote Tommy in front of your class. Can I get the last 10 minutes of class, bring some food, and talk a little bit about the program? So now, little Tommy and little Johnny are standing up in front of class talking about their new interview process, talking about the money, talking about the career, talking about what's going to happen. You talk a little bit about it. Then you say, okay, everybody, please stand to your feet, and you promote so-and-so for it. You shake their hand, you have some pizza, and then you talk to everybody else. There you go. Right? They're, they're in their, their, their it's got the, the new symbol on their collar that says Navy and they get that t-shirt. Or it's not a t-shirt, it's, it's a polo shirt. You do it right there in the class. It's huge. Physician. You get a reserve physician, commission them at their hospital. They will be so proud. I mean, you'll find that these 45, 50, 60 year old doctors, are they interested in the money if they're making three quarters of a million dollars? No way. No. They want to serve and they want to pass out that business card that says Lieutenant Commander or Commander at the Country Club, right? So you make big deal and you're in your whites and you're commissioning them right there in the, in the hospital. It's a big deal. Here's another one. You have to meet with an applicant to do their, their kit, right? You meet them in a student union at lunch. You're in your khakis, you're your whites. You're sitting there right across from them. Their friends are like, what's that all about? I'm applying for a scholarship. Generates more conversation, right? That COI event, commissions and enlistments, promotions, welcome back parties. Those are some different menus. Invite their friends and COIs, right? Make a big deal out of these commission ceremonies. Bring out their counterparts. You're commissioning a, a person on a, or you're going to enlist the person that's going away to OCS, or you're going to promote somebody. The COIs that you met, invite them to come to the, to the promotion party. All the exposure, it's free. Nothing you do, like an enlistment takes Five minutes, it's not a big deal, but you do it with intentionality. It's no longer now a processing thing, it's a recruiting event. How many of you are going to be doing RTC interviews and things like that? Anybody give me an RTC coordinator? Okay. When you do the ROTCs, they have these things called ISRs. They're immediate selection reservations that we give immediately on a water scholarship. I tell the CEOs of uh, commands, don't give it out to the best qualified, because guess what, they're going to get accepted anyway. Give it out to someone who's in a school that you're trying to penetrate and create a market. A good tech school. Kids good, meets the minimum qualification for the immediate scholarship selection, but they're there and they're in a market you're trying to get into. Everything you do is intentional. There's no defensive move in Kung Fu. There's no academic or no processing or administrative move in recruiting. It's all intentional with the desire and the end state of generating people for you to talk to. Qualified people. Presentations and lunches. Bring a collegiate when you're going to go meet with them. So if you're going to establish that relationship, we talked about that. You're going to go in and meet with a COI. Have your collegiate meet with them because they know your collegiate. Now they know someone that you know and you can, they can validate that relationship. Meet a seller at work. What holiday happens in November? Thanksgiving. What other holiday? Veterans Day. Veterans Day. <laughs> what if your cell res was a civil engineer and they wore their uniform to work? or a doctor, or a nurse, and they're wearing their lab coat, but they're doing their rounds in their khakis at a hospital. Would that generate conversation? Yes. Hey, in honor of Veterans Day, would you consider wearing your uniform to work? I'll come there, I'll meet you for lunch. You got a walking billboard walking around the orthopedic department at UCLA. The law of reciprocity. 
We're, we're coming to an end here. Give, ask, receive. Give, value added. If you are a crappy recruiter, you will never get a referral. Guess the news. You don't deserve it. If you're not a good recruiter, you can't get them through mess. You don't get their application done. You don't return their calls. You don't get good customer service. You don't deserve referrals, right? How many of you have had a good customer experience in, experience somewhere? You have a good customer experience? You might tell one or two people. How many of you had a bad one? How many people do you tell? Everybody. Everybody, right? If you have provided good service, good follow-up, and you've established their trust, this is what most recruiters do. Listen, we talk, I gave that presentation earlier today because that, that's some folks, but that's really a very small portion. The vast majority of recruiters are hardworking, honest, and diligent, and they do good work. The problem is then they sit waiting passively, hoping for a referral. You have to ask. If you've given good service and you ask, it's an active means to generate referrals, not passive. You must set the expectation that they're going to refer people to you. All right? And it, it will become part of their routine. Especially if they're getting promoted. And for your COIs, if they see kids getting money, getting scholarships, getting placement, they will be all over it. And that's what you're looking for. Now, Gen Off recruiters is a little bit more challenging because they're not getting scholarships, right? But they're still getting awesome careers, right? You receive a referral. Any questions? A lot of information, huh? How many of your heads are popping off right now? Wow, I don't know if I can keep up with all this. Yes. Lieutenant Wilcher, uh, NRD Chicago. My question, sir, you, you mentioned about the <coughs> elevator speech. Um, just how would you handle a situation if you were at the gym. So we talked earlier and Chief Heimer brought up the fact that a lot of people we actually get through but then they fail out during their first ISC at OCS. So if I want to get somebody who's qualified, I go work at the university gym and they're you know working out or whatever, would you engage someone who you might have seen at the career fair or someone? Absolutely. How would you engage them? I've never actually engaged them. If I saw, if I saw someone... Is everyone with the headphones? Well, uh, well, well, well if, they're, if they're headphones, I'm, I'm not going to... Interrupt games. Well, listen, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Here you know what you do? You throw some heavy-ass stuff on that. Hey, 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 can I get a spot? Oh, there you go. Hey, can I get a spot? That's a good one. I mean, it, uh, it'll break the conversation. Okay. Hey, can I get a spot? Can I get a spot? <laughs> 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 Thanks. Can I get an appointment? <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's what I would do. I would seriously, hey, hey can I get a spot? And it's this little little guy. <laughs> I know I could, I could curl you, <laughs> but you know, it's, I mean, that's, that would be one way to do it. I mean, or you just tap on them. You know, the people body language says a lot in the gym. Okay, and uh, it's like some people will go to the gym and they just ch -ch 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 chat it up. I, I usually avoid those people, right? Uh, unless it's people that I know. But I mean, that 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 probably best place to open the door. But once you have that conversation, telling you, hey, ask a question. You, you know who I am in the Navy, right? If, if you or someone else you knew were interested in the military, who would you send them to? Just to see. If you or someone else you knew were interested in the military, who would you send them to? That opens the door. I don't know. I never really thought about it. Well, I, elevator speech, I'm a scholarship coordinator. Give $5,000 a month, guaranteed placement after graduation for engineering students. If you know someone who might be interested, let me know. I'll give you a card when I get back to the locker room. Okay? The most, the most, there's some of you that, that have been in recruiting for a while, but I don't think anybody remembers what we call lead the boys. is the old, old sales system. It's previous to, it's previous to, uh, to professional selling skills even. And there was a line that was in that that I continue to use. When you hear someone say, objection of some way, I'm not interested, or I wouldn't refer someone, you know, what would be the response for most people? Well, why not? Why not is almost an aggressive mode, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have a reason for saying that. Do you mind if I ask what that is? Okay. You have an obvious reason for feeling that way. Do you mind if I ask why? Right? It's the same thing. It's why not, but in a much less intrusive way. Just like if you, you were someone else and you were interested in the military, who would you send them to? Okay? All right. Good question. Anything else? 
Yes. Sir, Lieutenant Murray, uh, going to NRG New England. I'm going to be a medical officer recruiter with a primary focus on MSC. So I've already started to strategize a little bit, and for just physician assistant programs that are already accredited, there's like 18 schools. How would you recommend that I go about starting to kind of whittle my way down which schools to start with and not? Okay, so MSC is two year program. Most, most MSC programs are two years. Uh, I don't know right now, do we have scholarship programs or is it just existing or folks who are getting ready to graduate? So HSCP and HBSP. Okay. Uh, so should you be recruiting in the institution where they're already in the school or somewhere where they're pre preparing to go into it? Probably preparing. Probably preparing, right? Yeah. So just like physicians, right? Where you find those? You find them in pre-med programs, you know, things of that nature. Uh, so when you're recruiting for MSC, Student programs for MSC, there's only a couple, right? PA uh, and Clint Psych, right? Those are the big ones. You go to where they're they're preparing to enter in that program. So for doctors, you go to the pre-med, biologies, and all those different places. And all those, just like in the new, they have they have medical career fairs, and those are typically done in the spring, the year before they enter into their senior year, because that they're already preparing for that, right? So those folks who are looking for those academic programs, you go and you, you attack those career fairs, and that's where you develop those relationships. Again, developing COIs, the way I talked about with letters of recommendation, all those things pertain. Your collegiate pool. Now, we talked, we, we briefly mentioned HPSP. You can obtain from BUMED all the HPSP students in your AOR, and you can contact them and develop COI relationships with them. We tried this at Loma Linda. And we developed, we got a three-year scholarship about it, and then I transferred, so I don't remember what happened after that. I'm not, I'm not aware of it. But we created an HPSP club, and we had a meeting, and the president of our HPSP club was an Air Force HPSP. And what we did was we said, hey, you are very close proximity with March Air Force Base. On March Air Force Base, you are, you're, you're a commissioned officer as an HPSP student. You have access to... Base, commissary, exchange, golf course, Mac travel. You have all these things available to you if you're interested. So we gave them a folder, we talked a little bit about it, and then they maintained the regular Trumpy. I don't remember what happened after that again, I left, but that's another way to get some breaking into it. But once you start to break into it and you have a strong COI base, you will, I mean, if you get 80 COIs in the course of your three years, you will be very busy. Generating newsletters quarterly, stopping by to see these folks, but really working applicants. Anything else? Yes? What about those folks who are going to areas where um, other services are more prominent, so you're not at San Diego, but in St. Louis, where there's a Scott Air Force Base that, you know, people have much more presence of a different service? We took over Loma Linda. The only thing close by is, is uh, uh, March Air Force Base. It, 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 listen. My best friend from high school just retired as an Air Force Colonel because he couldn't be a Navy scholarship. He wanted to go Navy, but he joined the Air Force. Because first, first of all, he wanted to be in the military. And, that's too and if you provide better customer service than those Air Force folks, that's how you do it. You get their package done faster, you get them accepted. We've lost a lot of applicants for HPSP to other services because this past year we had a problem with scrolls. We lost a ton of folks. And I put that on the administration after I left, they failed to maintain the relationships and maintain that process tightly. When I left, that thing fell apart. And we lost dozens of HPSP personally. We lost a ton of HPSP applicants because of scrolling process. And that's just lack of leadership at the headquarters. And I personally, uh, they came down on some folks up there for not doing their job. They've tightened that up. But the same thing happens everywhere. You outperform the other services. That's how you take over today. Anything else? Great question. All right, that's all I've got. Welcome to recruiting. All the doom and gloom, it shouldn't apply to anybody in this room. And if it doesn't, you should have a great time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, sir.